giant three spells. That's right, there are decks out there that are super viable that run three spells. And this giant three spell deck has actually been around for a bit and is super viable in the current meta. Now, the whole giant three spell thing is something that I thought, hmm, that's kind of wonky at first, but it's actually super viable. It's been pretty prevalent and powerful for some time now. I've seen it in a lot of different metas, and you know, it's definitely really strong in the current meta, so I definitely recommend giving this a go. It would be really good in metas where bait is really popular, which isn't really the case right now, but regardless, this deck does work out really well. And really quickly, guys, if you're wondering what the shirt is, it's Ermagerd. Irma Purr, and there's a picture of a pug on it, so a little, little comedy there. I try to have funny shirts and stuff like that from time to time. Anyway, let's get to this deck here. This is essentially like a beatdown deck, but it's kind of funky. It's kind of a little bit different, and there's a lot of different things that you want to keep in mind when playing this. First of all, you're going to be relying a little bit more on your spells um, because you have three spells. It's not like a golem beatdown deck where you just build this massive snowball push and try to just plow through to your opponent's king tower. It's a little bit different than that. It's more almost like a control deck, but with the giant in there, it can be played kind of like a beatdown deck or like a giant double prince deck, which is kind of more of a control style deck. Um, you can put the prince behind the giant, uh, electric dragon behind the giant, mega minion behind the giant. Uh, but other than that, you know, you got your spells and you got your minor. So let's talk about this. There's kind of two win conditions in this deck, and if you think about it, there's a third pseudo win condition as well. Well, the two obvious ones, I mean, of course, Giant is a win condition. It goes straight for the tower, it's a tank, you get it in training camp, unless they change that. It used to be in training camp, I think it still is. Um, it's just a pretty straightforward, understandable, easy to play win condition. The minor is a lot more complicated, and I know it's not too complex, and anybody that's a good player at this game knows you know, that the minor, how the minor works, but if you're a beginner, kind of understanding the intricacies of the minor and why he's so powerful and effective and why being able to place him anywhere on the arena is such a big deal um, you know it doesn't come as naturally right away as like the giant just putting the giant in the back watching him go to the opponent's tower putting units behind him watching him wreck right so you got your two main win conditions which are the giant and the minor and then you could also argue that the prince is kind of a pseudo win condition he doesn't go directly for the tower but he does have a ton of damage and if he does connect to the tower, even with just one charge effect, it takes out like a thousand health. Not, not that much, but it's like, it's an insane amount of HP to the tower. It can do some serious damage. So, the, um, as I mentioned, the prince is also kind of a pseudo win condition, but you use him a little bit more on defense. You're generally going to be using the giant as your offensive unit. And then this is really interesting, and I remember this from a CWA video a long time ago, is you can actually kind of, so to speak, you can pass the baton from your giant over to your miner. So you've got, you know, your support units, and they're going in for a counter push. You put your giant down. You know, let's say you defended with your E-Dragon or Mega Minion, right? And you want to make use of them. You don't want them to just go into the opponent's tower and die before they can even get any swings off. You've invested, you know, like seven elixir into that or whatever, so you want to make sure you make use of it. So then you put your giant down in front of them as it's crossing the bridge, and then all of a sudden you've turned this defensive, you know, set of units into a very deadly counter push. Now, once that giant has died or is getting to be low health, you can actually send in your miner, and again, you're kind of passing the baton from the giant over to your miner, because the giant was playing that role of that main tank, tanking for the tower, doing the damage to it, but he's about to die, you want your E-Dragon, your Mega Minion, and maybe your Prince to live a little bit longer, get more value, you send in the miner on the tower, all of a sudden the tower's attacking that miner, and that's doing the job of tanking for uh, your support units. Alright guys. The E-Drag, as I mentioned, it's a stun unit, so naturally, it's great for countering Inferno units. You're going to see Inferno Towers and Inferno Dragons and Sparkies that are going to be great counters to your Giant, so that's mainly what that E-Drag is there for. He's also just kind of a range support card that just, you know, plays that range support role, similar to a Musketeer, uh, which is really good in this deck. You do want to have a range support card, for sure. So, mainly for countering those two things, but he can also be used for a little bit of other things, just like a range support role as well. Um, don't forget that he has that stun effect, so if something, if he's targeting a tower, um, you can actually cause the tower to retarget with any stun effect to the closest unit. So if, like, your E-Drag is running in, and then you send in the Miner, and the Princess Tower is locked onto your E-Drag, and then the E-Drag stuns the Princess Tower, the Princess Tower will then switch over to the Miner, because the Miner is now closer, the Princess Tower's attack has been reset, and the E-Drag will be a lot more safe. So do keep that in mind with that stun effect. Alright guys, um, what about the Mega Minion? Well, Mega Minion is just pretty typical in most decks, honestly. He's good in a lot of beatdown decks. You see him all over the place. 
Uh, he's just very typical and mainstream now for a number of reasons, so uh, I would recommend that card for sure in this deck. Uh, it's just a reliable defensive card, and if you have a tank in front of him and he does manage to connect to the tower, he can wreck that tower so fast. He's got really high damage, really high DPS, so, you know, if you can manage to get him onto the tower, that tower will, you know, drop very quickly, especially with, like, a giant or something tanking in front of him, doing extra damage as well. But generally, the Mega Minion's gonna be used on defense, you're gonna be using it to counter things behind your opponent's tanks, or hogs, or ram riders, or battle rams, so it's good for countering your musketeers, and wizards, and witches, and things like that in the back. You can also be just a, uh, you know, source of extra DPS for taking out big tanks like, you know, a golem or a giant or something like that. Now what about the three spells? Because that's kind of core in this deck. Well, the three spells, as I mentioned, it allows you to counter bait really well, which isn't so popular in this deck, but it just really clears up the way for your win conditions. And that's why I do think of this as kind of a beatdown deck, but it's also more of a control deck, because you're not building up a massive push as much as you are like playing defense than using the giant or the miner uh, you know, at the bridge or the miner sent in once your support units have gotten towards the bridge so that you know it can take for those support units. So it's more of a control style deck kind of, although it has elements of beatdown to it. Uh, and again, especially because of those three spells in there, you're consistently going to be able to clear the path. If they've got a goblin gang and a skeleton army, you know, you can send your miner in, you can log the gang, and then they put the skeleton army down right after and then you zap the skeleton army. It's great. So there is definitely a lot of uh, crowd control with those spells. You can clear the way out for your giant or your miner or whatever you may need to in order to get some serious damage onto the opponent's towers. Now, I keep talking about the miner being used to counter or to tank and to do damage to the princess tower or the king tower, but it can actually be used as a counter to uh, range support units or any sort of support unit as well. If you've got a push going in, and let's say they have an E-Wiz and it's going to counter your Prince and it's going to counter it by you know, preventing the charge. You can send in the Miner directly onto the E-Wiz or maybe the Musketeer or the Wizard or the Witch or the Princess or whatever it is. And the Miner generally, especially if there's some sort of um, support for that Miner uh, or something tanking the tower for it, Miner will generally be able to take out that range support unit. So you can use it to snipe out Princesses and things like that as well. So do keep that in mind. And naturally, it can be used to counter pumps, of course. You can use the miner, you can use the fireball to counter pump. I wouldn't recommend log and zap so much against pumps. I think at one point they were in equal trade, I don't know if that's still the case anymore. But definitely don't be afraid to use your fireball on a pump. You can also do things like send in the miner, making your opponent think that they're going that you're sending the miner onto their uh, pump, but actually sends it to the princess tower, and then just fireball the pump. Or vice versa. You know, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So you have two things to counter pumps for sure. Alright guys, so Let's talk about card replacements and opening moves, and then we'll wrap this up. This will be a pretty quick video. So for card replacements, uh, let's start from the top left there and work our way to the bottom right if we're looking at the uh, deck list on the top left of this of my screen here. So for Zap, you can always go with another light spell. Um, you can go for Snowball or Barbarian Barrel. But I think if you're going to replace a log, you would do Barbarian Barrel. For Zap, there's really no reason to replace it if you wanted to, maybe Snowball. But, I mean, Zap is like one of the most versatile spells. It's a common. Why would you replace it? For Mega Minion, you could just go like Minions or Mini Pekka or something like that, but probably something that attacks air because you don't have too much air defense. So maybe regular Minions would be good. If you wanted to just get a ranged support card like a Musketeer, that might work out as well too. Just be careful that they don't that they don't fireball you know your Musketeer and your E Drag if they're clumped up together. Uh, for the fireball, you could go for like a Poison. You could also go for a heavy spell like a Rocket or a uh, Lightning. If you wanted to go, I feel like you could fit a Pump in this deck, but there isn't as much element of spell bait. If you were going to run Musketeer or something, or Hunter instead of uh, Mega Minion, and then you were to run Pump instead of like Fireball or one of your spells, then you do have an element of spell bait with the Musketeer or Hunter, with the uh, Pump, and with the Electro Dragon. But other than that, I would probably stick to the three spells. For the Giant, you could easily go like a Goblin Giant if you like that. If you wanted to go super heavy, you could go uh, Golem, but I don't know if Golem 3 spell works out quite as well as Giant 3 spell. Uh, for the Prince, Maybe like a bandit, something heavy hitting, maybe even like a mini P.E.K.K.A., something like that. You just do some serious damage to melee units. Uh, you could go Dark Prince, but he's not that great right now. For the Electro Dragon, you want another stunner unit, so like Zappies or Ewas is a great go-to. Uh, for the Log, as I mentioned, you could do Barbarian Barrel. And then for the Miner, unfortunately, nothing plays that same role as the Miner does going onto the tower. But you could go for another win condition like a Hog or a Battle Ram, or maybe just another mini tank like a knight or a valkyrie or something like that. As far as opening moves go for this deck, guys, it's pretty straightforward. You can open with a giant in the back, a prince in the back, you can cycle your electro dragon, 
you could cycle your Mega Minion, you could send in your Miner onto the tower to get a little bit of chip damage initially, um, but you do have three spells, so if you are the kind of player that likes waiting for your opponent to make the first move, and then you want to counter maybe with, say, one of your spells or something like that, that's an option. I wouldn't recommend just cycling a log onto their tower, but if you are all out of options and you want to get that out of your hand, that is definitely an option as well. Alright guys, that is it for tonight. Thanks so much for watching all the way until the end here. Let me know if you like this kind of shorter format or if you like having the longer videos sometimes. Make sure to leave that in the comment section below uh, if you have anything to say about it or you have any questions. Um, and make sure to leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching guys and have a good night.